Let's talk profitability for entrepreneurs and business owners. Most business owners are incredibly dissatisfied with how much cash they can actually pull out of their business. They'll be turning millions of pounds, hundreds of thousands of pounds, but can't put any into their personal bank account. And here's the harsh reality. Building a business organically takes so much time. And there is another way. There is another way of extracting profits from your business much quicker. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how. Here's the harsh reality of being a business owner. Most businesses fail. In fact, only 5% of businesses make it to their 10 year anniversary. Around half of them fail within the first year and 80% of them are gone by year five. Not great statistics. And even if you do get to that 10 year anniversary and you do have a business that seems to be working and it's making money on paper, it's very hard to extract it into your personal bank account and have an amazing lifestyle. You've probably put your life savings into it, borrowed loads of money, and it feels like you're just professionally moving money around. You're paying suppliers, you're paying staff, you're paying back your bank, you're paying all the turnover taxes, and then when you actually make some profit, you feel like you just wipe in the bank account to pay your corporation tax. That's most business owners. But I discovered something else. See, you've got a business and you're running it and things are going well and you're organically growing the profits. Maybe you're growing them 5, 10, 15, 20% year on year. And then you end up reinvesting so much of your profits back into the business in that gain to grow the business even further, hoping that one day at the end of the rainbow, there's going to be a pot of gold for you. What if we could speed that process up? This is very true that when people get to their 60s and 70s, that's when they have their wealth days. Why not have them in your 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s? Why not speed up the process? So the way you do it is you buy in profits rather than grow the profits. Let me just say that again. You want to buy in profits rather than grow your profits. And you might be thinking, bloody hell, that sounds a bit complicated. I'm not a venture capitalist. I'm not a private equity person. I've never bought another business before. But let me just tell you my humble beginnings. I literally started as a clown, a kid's magician doing kids' birthday parties. I've got no snazzy university degree. I've never worked for an investment bank. I've just learned this stuff over a period of 20 years. And hopefully in this video, you can swipe and deploy that 20 years experience and get some golden nuggets so that you might be able to go on the same path that I did. It was life changing for me. And what is risk? Because that's what you're probably thinking right now. You know, oh dear, I don't know, this sounds a bit scary. Buying other companies, buying profits. Uh, you know, what does that mean to me, James? Well, Risk comes from not understanding what you're doing. And I want to give you an analogy now. Imagine you're driving a car for the first time. I can still remember doing that. It was really scary. You know, moving this machine that could go up to 70, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. I've never done it before. I remember going really slow, but felt like I was going really fast. But once I've driven the car 10 times, 100 times, once I've driven for five years or even just a year, it doesn't seem risky at all. In fact, you just get out of bed and you get in your car and you go to work or do life's day-to-day -day stuff. The risk diminishes the more you do it. I've done it so many times that now it just becomes second nature to me. So what are the first steps of this daunting task of buying profitability, of buying a business? Well, we're gonna simplify it so it isn't daunting. The first step is a brilliant business model. Because very true, you could find a profitable business that's got no staff and it's all run by a single person that knows everything. They've got a secret squirrel understanding of a particular sector and industry. We avoid all those at all possible costs. And I want to think about the business that you're acquiring or your business as a castle. And I want you to put lots of moats around your castle. These moats protect the castle from being evaded by the enemy. And here the enemy could be things going wrong, competition, um, a marketplace taking you out, government deciding they don't like your sector. All those things have happened since time began. So we want to put moats around our castle to protect us. What are those moats? Well, for me, that is is a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. We don't want to buy businesses where one big customer makes all the revenue of the business. We want recurring income, lovely, predictable cash flow. I always like to give an example here. Having a restaurant is very unpredictable. A fickle marketplace goes to a restaurant. Yeah, there's lots of people that buy from you regularly, but they might decide to go to the new restaurant that opens in town. 
fickle marketplace. Avoid that at all costs. Via a supermarket like a Sainsbury's or a Tesco's or a Walmart, they've got lots of regular customers going all the time and they create loyalty programs to make their customers sticky to the business. So it's very predictable cash flow. That's why I love the Costco business model so much. You know, they've got people paying them £80 a year to use Costco so they can predict that those people are going to make best use of their £80. And in fact, 70% of Costco's profitability comes from their membership subs. It's so predictable. It's so sticky. You want to find businesses like that gives you huge moats around your business. You like location-based businesses. I love location-based businesses. I own zoos, I own day nurseries, hotels, ice cream and coffee shops. Those location-based businesses means that someone can't just come on my patch. I would much rather own an ice cream shop over an ice cream van because someone else can just go and buy an ice cream van and start doing the same round as me. I've got no protection over streets, but a business, a building, I have protection around. And I want exit appetite. This is one of the best moats around your castle, around your business. Because if there is exit appetite, you know that you are on to something really good. What is exit appetite? Well, it's whether other people's money pension funds, private equity, big financiers want to buy into your sector and industry. You build a chain of care homes for old age pensioners and you build 10 of them and you're making good profits, you will have a list of people that want to buy those care homes. Not so much if you own 10 restaurants because that's a much more fickle marketplace. The care home is a much more steady eddy approach. I've been in both sectors and let me tell you now, Care is so much more easy to sell. There is massive exit appetite. And lots of people don't think about exit appetite. See, when you're building a business, you should be building a business to sell, even if you have no intention of selling it, because that discipline will just make you build something far more profitable. And the whole point of this business is, how can we get more profits out of our business? Well, understanding exit appetite is one of the best ways of doing that. If you want to know more on business models, watch this video above my head where I break down brilliant business models. Now, two more points on what makes a brilliant business model. It's putting protections around your business and having brilliant management teams. In fact, one of the best things that business owners can do is understand that when they're first running a business, they're head of cash flow. They're the cash flow executive officer. But once they've got cash flow understood and they're starting to generate profits in your business, the next job is becoming a full-time recruiter. That's what I do. You've got to be on the hunt for talent. And building an amazingly talented management team to run the day-to-day -day of the business will just make your business so much more profitable. Because then that puts you into a growth mindset rather than an operating mindset. And I always say this, you should be growing your business, not operating your business. How do you have faith to grow your business? Well, you make sure that you've got the best people operating it. Right, let's have a key example. Let's look at something that I've actually did. Now, a few years ago, I bought an ice cream company. It was a manufacturer of ice cream. That was its income stream. It was selling circa a million pounds worth of ice cream to over a thousand independent customers. And some of those customers were also branded up as the same ice cream company that I'd bought. So I bought Rossi Ice Cream Manufacturing and there were Rossi shops. And I looked at the business and thought, well, I could organically grow and get loads more independent customers. And yeah, I want to do that, but I can absolutely explode the growth of this business if I bought some of those ice cream shops. Because if I was a direct manufacturer and then supplying to my own shops and benefiting from all the direct to consumer margin, because when you're direct to business, you get much less gross profit, but much bigger customers. I could have best of both worlds. So direct to consumer margin with the shops and direct to wholesale or direct to business with the manufacturing, put them together, you should have a brilliant business. I mean, you look at Nike, they've really cottoned on to that in recent years. Years ago, they were a wholesaler selling their shoes to sports shops like JD Sports, but now they do a horrific amount of sales direct on the Nike website. So they're making the shoe and selling in ones direct to consumer, but also to lots of sports shops. I thought, how can I do that with my own ice cream shop and my own ice cream business? I'll buy all the shops. And I did. I bought the Rossi ice cream parlor shop and it was making a quarter of a million pounds worth of profit each and every single year. Bowl that onto the manufacturing business rather than taking five, seven years to slowly grow the direct to wholesale business and get an extra quarter of a million pounds worth of profit. I could buy it in at the stroke of a pen just doing one single deal. 
And I absolutely believe that most of you could do that. Yes, I had to borrow some money to do it. Yes, I had to fund it myself. But actually, I put a quarter of a million pounds in, borrowed a million pounds from the bank. Within a year, I've got my own money back. And now the Rossi Ice Cream business is a quarter of a million pound more profitable each and every single year on the basis of an acquisition. These are things that you need to do. Now, I went on to then go and buy 10 other coffee shops and another Rossi Ice Cream shop and vertically integrate and create a massive ecosystem driving the profitability very quickly and the size of the business in just three short years rather than waiting for organic growth year after year after year. Let's just break this down a little bit. You don't have to be Nike to make this work and you don't have to buy 10 coffee shops. I just started buying one business at a time and over a period of 20 years, I've grown a pair of balls and decided to go much bigger in my approach. The same philosophy stands today, the same methodology stands today whether I'm doing big deals or smaller deals. So what do we do next? We want to buy past performance when we're looking at deals to buy. We do not want to buy in future potential. And that's why it's really important to find businesses that are established. Remember that, only 5% of businesses pass their 10-year anniversary. So if we can find businesses that are over 10 years old, that strikes me as a good enough reason that the establishment is going to protect the business. It's a massive moat around the castle. We want to buy businesses, not jobs. So many people that are selling businesses are just selling a job. You don't want to buy a job. You're an entrepreneur and you want to live by the philosophy of E plus M, equals S. Entrepreneurship plus management equals success. You want to have great management teams in your business. And when you're buying in a, um, a business and you see, well, actually, I can get this really cheap, but it's got loads of potential, don't think about you being the potential. You're the grower of a business, not an operator of a business. This is a hotel that I'm recording this from. I bought the hotel over a year ago. There wasn't going to be any management team post-completion, but I had a management team in one of my other businesses that I wanted to hopscotch over to here, give them a another opportunity to grow within our organization. So that perfectly fits E plus M equals S. If you're going to buy a business that is profitable, that's been around a long time, that seems to fit all the rules, but they haven't got a management team, but you've got a management team, or you can afford to put great management into the business, then that can be a good opportunity. Next, you want at least a million pounds worth of revenue. Because when you've got one million plus revenue, that means that you've got enough fat in the business to make sure you can afford to have management. And if you're going to use debt to service the business, and when you're buying it, you want to make sure there's enough profitability to service that debt. Now, when I bought that ice cream shop, I bought it for one and a quarter million quid. I put 250,000 in, I borrowed a million quid, but the business was making so much profit profit, I knew that the business's profits could service the debt without me having to put any more money in. Really crucial point. How do we do the deals? Now, you might be thinking, well, James, it's all lovely for you. You had the quarter of a million pounds. You had the access to the bank finance to go and buy a business from scratch. Well, it wasn't always that case for me. Um, that's taken years to achieve. My first deals, I used lots of different creative strategies, including my favorite, which I still do today, called vendor finance, where you buy a business and use the business's cash flow and profitability to pay the vendor off, the seller. Why would the seller want to do that? Well, it's hugely tax efficient. Here in the UK, you only pay 10% tax on the first million pounds of a business sale, and then 20% after that. It's called asset business disposal relief. It's the most tax efficient way of getting cash out of your business. So if you're a seller, it's very tax efficient. And you make sure you've got warranties and protections in place for them, so that if you default, they get the business back and keep all the money, or you give them a guarantee, or you secure it against property. There's many ways of doing that, and I've made loads of videos here on the channel. But let me break down a little story for you. A couple of years ago, I bought a day nursery. It was 15 minutes away from one of my other businesses. I've got 10 day nurseries. I've got an amazing management team to run the day nurseries. This was a hugely established business. It's been around for three decades. It was doing, at one point, nearly close to a million of revenue, but it started to wean down as the owners weren't keeping an eye on it and the wrong management team were in place. And so what we needed to do was come up with a new structure around the business. We needed to improve the business. We needed to come up with a creative way to buy this business because it was starting to tumble down. Banks wouldn't lend towards it because the profitability wasn't there. And it had actually had a problem with the regulator here in the UK, which is called 
called Ofsted, which means it was completely unfundable. So I had to come up with a creative strategy to buy the business. So I said to the owner, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take on the business. I'll buy the property. And that's why I also wanted to buy it because it had a freehold around it. I'll buy the property and I'll pay for it over a period of time. I'll pay you £5,000 a week to buy the business. And I paid that money every single week. And then over a period of a year, I will then get the business revalued and I will take out the existing debt with the bank. And that's exactly what I did. So I used vendor finance for a year, paying down some of the um, debt to the business owner that I was buying the business from, then got it revalued with a big valuer here in the United Kingdom, marched up to the bank and said, look, I bought it for this. I've started paying down this much money. I've done a quarter of a million pounds that I've paid back over the last year. I've improved the profitability. This is what I've done over the last year. You can see that I've run 10 other businesses. There's a freehold property around it. Look how great this deal is. And actually, verbatim, that's what happened. I took out the vendor finance with the bank and the bank are always so much more relaxed to give you deals if they can see that you're actually running the thing, if they can see that you're in the business and making it all happen. It massively de-risks it for them. I've done loads of business takeover videos here on the YouTube channel. Click this one here and you can see how I bought that business. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you've learned some great stuff to help grow your business. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like, and I'll see you in the comments. Bye-bye.